I mean, this guy was the best. He was uh-huh. the best because right. his dad had pushed him so hard and he went through the motions, but he was acting out in rebellion through other oh. things and getting into stuff that he shouldn't have got into. Uh, no. Ooh, that's better, right, babe? Yeah! Yeah. She founded an architectural concrete company. He founded a hundred million dollar clothing company. She took the world by storm as a social media star. He took the world by storm as a famous serial entrepreneur. Together we started a business. And had babies. Now we're figuring out the best ways to do both. Join us as we learn from other entrepreneurs going through the same life struggles. As they share their life hacks about success, love, kids. And everything in between. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist. Quote by Pablo Picasso. Don't handicap your children by making their lives easy. Quote by Rabble A. Hammond. Welcome to this episode of the Pretty and Punk Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Caldwell, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, Ildiko Ferenzi. And we have Hi, another great podcast for you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. We have another great podcast for you guys. And it's just about something that is pressing on our heart because we're always trying to push our kids. And it's are we helping or hurting our kids by pushing them or not pushing them as hard as we do? Because... I feel like that there is that middle ground you have to find, whether you are pushing your kids or not pushing your kids. I see a lot of families out there that are just, and and I recently heard this, and this is where the conversation actually comes up from, is where they were, and I and I see the point of view too, that when they let their kids just kind of find their way, and they're kind of you know playing video games and roaming around and trying to, you know, do on social media well, and I worry. maybe playing basketball, but they, they're trying to find their way. Mm-hmm. Should we be pushing them at all? And if so, how hard? What do you think? Well, before we jump into that. Hey guys, we hope you're enjoying today's episode of the Pretty and Punk Podcast. And if you are and you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, it just takes a second. It means so much to us because it really helps the podcast get out there to more listeners like you guys. And if you know anybody, it might help and you can send it to them. We really appreciate that too. We also love and appreciate your reviews. Even the babies look forward to them every day. If you share this episode on social media today, don't forget to tag us. We want to celebrate you because we know it's not easy being a parent in business. And the way that you juggle things makes you a superhero. That's worth a shout out. Together, we have a community of our personal followers as well. And we just want to put it out there. We want to show everybody that this juggle is possible. And you are our family and we're so proud and grateful to have you a part of this family so don't forget the all the links are below in the show notes and thank you again and let's get back to the show are we helping or hurting our children when we try to push them into greatness I have something to say on this. <laughs> I really do. The floor is yours. The floor is mine. So for me and my experience, and I found this very useful in our home, we did not expose our children to devices. I know that that's something that is recommended, but we have really kept that until they were four years old. Destiny was a little bit younger, but I feel... When you don't have any kind of distractions or you have them on YouTube, you really get to, plus I had the privilege of staying at home with my children. Of course, there was a part of that time when I was fighting for my life, but I was so lucky and grateful to be with my children so I could see what sort of things that they gravitated to at a very young age. And I think that's very important for parents to be able to have that observation of their children to see what type of things that they like, that they do. And I do feel 
a lot of that is also influenced by us. I didn't use devices for health reasons around them. So they would see us interact with adults. They would see, they would come to our meetings. They would, I would speak, you know, we would pray over them. We would speak um, inspirational quotes and share them. And Daniel at a very young age started saying quotes and destiny was into movement. And I think as a mother and a father, you can really see what sparks their, their, um, their excitement and their happiness and the things that they like. So bring, introduce those things into their lives. But, but, but let's move forward a little bit. Let's go to a point where Daniel is, we've kind of decided. So at this point we're, we're, we have this company who has a lot to do with quotes. And so we're introducing quotes to Daniel. Daniel's likes doing these quotes. So he started spitting mm-hmm. these quotes onto, uh, when we would do videos and stuff. And so mm-hmm. we just started recording him and we yeah. realized that he liked it a lot. So it, he, it kind of became his thing. And then right. we said, and then he started doing longer and longer. He started doing well, long poems because he and was, you were pushing him really hard at that time. Well, because but, he was, but let's so, talk about pushing though. But I, I don't, I can't say that I'm pushing. I felt more like I'm pouring into, he's hungry for more. And you said, I can't even believe a child this young is doing this stuff. I said, he loves the challenge. He's learning not children's prayers, but adult, long adult prayers. He's learning very intricate poems, um, classical poems. He was doing scripts. He was in an acting class, not because I wanted him in it, but he was interested, oh, what was acting? What I told him what acting classes were about. And I said, but you're not old enough. And he said, can I go? I said, you have to be five years old. So he was, remember, he was three and a half. He was three and a half. And he said, <laughs> he went into the school, um, into the class. And I had a little pull because I, I, was, I was doing really well in acting before I got pregnant. And I just kind of bypassed the age thing. And they asked him how old he was. He says, I'm five years old. <laughs> so, but he was just... Almost like he's pushing himself. Yeah, and he does. And don't get me wrong. I know he pushes himself. But what I'm trying to get out of you here is that we're not necessarily talking about where we're taking the kid. It's Mm -hmm. once they find something, you've called me off on him before. I've I've, I've gone off on Daniel a little bit when I saw him not giving a hundred percent when I know he oh, has it in him. Yeah. I mean, we- that is more, that is more like, and now, um, if he, because he has dedicated himself to become a public speaker. Now, if he's going to go out, if, if this is his wish to change the world, to perform his speech, the power of words, then he needs to be in it a hundred percent. If he doesn't want to perform, then don't perform. But don't go at it halfway. I understand that. And I can explain that to him in a way where he understands. He's a little bit older now. And now that he's made that his career choice at the morning at the moment, and he also understands that this can pivot. He could be a an architect or whatever he wants to be. But it's important for him to take accountability for himself. Well, there are parents out there that will, I mean, you'll see them. You go to any kid's baseball game or soccer game or whatever, or uh, some of these practices where, they're, you know, these parents are paying a lot of money maybe to put them in a certain type of practice. And when they don't, when they, they know they're not, or maybe they think they're not giving 150%, you'll hear them screaming across the field or yelling at them or they're walking to, you know, maybe they didn't get a hit during the game or maybe they're not, they didn't dig hard enough when they were trying to get a catch or maybe they weren't practicing hard enough, whatever it might be. And you have these parents that are, you know, really putting it on their kids. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I can't relate to that because, 
and and going back, I, I yes, I've seen that, but I can't I can't relate to that. That's that's not my style. And going back a little bit when you were saying pushing, I feel like it's important to not have anything interrupting the babies and the toddlers because that's when you're gonna find out what they're interested in. I think those parents that are yelling and freaking out, it's almost like are they truly doing something successful today or are they trying to relive their path? Maybe they were soccer stars when they were a kid or a football player or a baseball player or a basketball player or a painter, whatever, whatever. They had this, this glory moment when they were kids. That was their gift, but that may not necessarily be our children of today's gift Yes, right. I liked entrepreneurship and stuff. And it's so cool that Daniel's into that. But Destiny wasn't into that. She was into dancing and movement. Now that she sees her brother doing stuff, now she, I really want to be a part of what my brother's doing. She's inspired by him. But you cannot force success at doing something that may not be that kid's God-given gift. So I feel when I see and I observe that type of behavior, that's not it. I mean, my I had different talents than my brother, but we both had a love for business. Um, my mom never had to yell or push us to to greatness, even in dance, and we were getting medals and all all these things. But we knew my mother's story of how hard she worked to get us to a land and what she sacrificed to get us to a land of opportunity. And I feel a lot of people don't realize what they have. And I'm not going to be raising entitled or spoiled children. They know grandma's story. They know my story. And they, I feel, I feel they're more excited about doing great things and being close to the Lord because of who we are and they know our story. But yes, as you were saying, that type of pushing, that's, I feel like that's very toxic and so scary yeah. for that child because they might not even want to do that sport. They may do the sport till they graduate and then they're going to leave it. Well, I think that's now, why it's waste a very all fine that time? line because I, I do think kids like anybody need pushing. Like, yes, of course. Like when you're coaching, but do they love what they're doing? Well, yeah, I mean, but maybe they love what they're doing. But mm -hmm. sometimes a coach, you know, take the parent out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a coach, and and when you have a coach, you should let your coach coach rather than parent over them. I believe right. I've seen that too often, and right, that's not right, a good right, thing. Right. But if you're coaching your own kid, there's a certain level of that. To, to push that kid, sometimes you have to push them to a certain level. I mean, I, Kobe, uh, um, I, I think it's LeBron or Kobe. No, it wasn't LeBron. I think it was Kobe who's, mm -hmm. whose dad pushed him really hard mm -hmm. to practice hard, to, right. to tell him that he had to have so many shots in before you know the end of the day. And those are the types of things, you know, you're well, setting expectations makes, for them. That makes sense. That makes sense. And, of course, if we have the opportunity to go to school – and when I was in school, I knew I had to come home with the grades. I knew I had to work extra hard. And I remember being eight years old and I woke up to the sound of my mom crying. And it still gets me emotional because I went into the bathroom. And that's usually when she unwinds, she's having a bath. And I did, I heard her cry two times in her, in her life. Once with my report card, I think I got a C plus. And then another time when my brother died. Those were the only two times. She was a very strong woman, and she sadly had to pull her weight as a mother and father at, in one. So I'm sure she had emotions behind closed doors that I didn't see, maybe. But those were the two times. And it hit me so hard because I knew immediately why she was crying because she's working so hard and all I had to do was go to school and like pull the grades in. And I knew in my head that I was talking a little too much and getting sidetracked, you know, yeah. I was doing things that I knew were distracting me in class. So I didn't get the mark. I knew why I didn't get the mark and I was capable because I was always on the honor roll. 
older. Yeah. But I feel like uh, it just, I don't know, like you just want to do great. Just like that Hungarian soccer player, he knew when he, when he did the interview, um, they were asking him about his success and he said his father was, um, spent a lot of time with him playing, playing soccer, practicing and pouring into him, but he knew how hard his father had, um, had gone through life. So he wanted to make him proud. And that was almost a bonus for him because he had this, this weight that pushed him, that catapulted him to do great. And I feel... I mean, Dwayne. Do do well, I just I was thinking about Dwayne Johnson's story. I remember reading a post of his maybe a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and um, he was talking about his dad. And I, I don't think I don't know if it was his dad's birthday, but he was kind of reminiscing about his dad. And he said he wished he had repaired their relationship before he passed. Mm. But he said his dad was very hard on him, and and I, I, I just if I read into that a little bit, and mm-hmm. not knowing the whole story, so I could be way off, but. If I just read into that a little bit, Dwayne Johnson's accomplished a lot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, his dad was a wrestler too. Right. And Dwayne Johnson far exceeded, you know, the level that his dad had. But his dad was a famous wrestler. Right. And I think, you know, if if this was the case, his dad wanted better for him. He right. wanted him to excel past what he had done right and was probably pushing him very hard in certain places of his life right and of course that played out in Dwayne's life but at the same time it may have caused their relationship to fracture Hmm. so Dwayne Johnson went on to become one of the greatest superstars of our lifetime you know one of the most famous people on the planet right but at the same time you know it probably early on caused a fracture in their relationship. Mm. And I don't know that's 100% the case, but that's kind of what I got from that post, You know, if I read into that post. So pushing him got that success, and I know I've read other stories, mm. you know, actually that other movie, King Ri- or that um, Will Smith movie, King Richard, right. about Serena and Venus Williams, he... That was a case of, and watching the movie, and I might have even been harder, you know, maybe they didn't show everything in there, but he pushed his kids hard and he right. made them practice hard. And mm-hmm. when they didn't give 150%, he called them out hard, mm. but they knew he loved them. And yeah, I think that's, that's the important. difference. That's the difference. When somebody just difference. walks on the field and you have this parent walk on the field and there's not love there. Yeah. And they try to force this, you need to practice and you need to work hard onto that kid. Right. It falls on deaf ears. And maybe when well, they maybe, don't feel and, that love, and the I fight think that other, and division ensues. Right. And that other point of if their parents aren't successful, and not even successful, but had the understand the sacrifices and you know all the work that they put into giving them a life of opportunity to having the the privilege of going after a passion yeah i mean I, 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 if you guys haven't watched king richard you guys got to watch that because that it's just a really really good movie and uh it it kind of just if if you want to pour into your kids or you you want greatness for your kids it's just It's kind of, there's a balance of expectation there Mm -hmm. in that movie. And it's almost like the perfect balance. It's like he's hard on his kids, but he's, 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 he's also expecting greatness from them and they love doing what they're doing. So they found what they love to do. Mm -hmm. They enjoyed what they love to do. And now they're excelling in it and he's pushing them hard because he sees greatness. Right. And they probably wanted to do well. Yeah. I don't think anybody, when they're fulfilling their passion, they don't want to do bad. They want to do great. I feel when we look at our kids, I feel like they want to do great. And I remember all the way back to when I was performing at three years old on stage doing the Hungarian pillow dance. And I remember making the wrong steps. And I was in my head, I'm like, ah, I messed up. And then the crowd started laughing. And eventually I ended up 
throwing my pillow at the audience <laughs> because they were laughing and I had my feelings hurt yeah. because I was already, my mom never pushed me, but I was already trying. Your mom never pushed you? Well, no, I mean, I mean at on, three she's... years old, no. I met when your I mom. Was, when I was older, the older I got, the responsibility became greater. And yeah. especially after my brother's death, we it was just two women in the house. That's it. Yeah. Nobody was helping us. So the responsibility was different than when I was three. But I remember her running up. My mom ran up after the performance and she said, oh, why did you do that? And I said, <laughs> they were laughing at me. And she said, they were laughing at you because you were cute. And they were all screaming, Chipush uh, Kish Paprika, which is how I got my nickname, Spicy Little Pepper, because I had a little temper, which Destiny has too. But yes, I feel like you still have. kids, they it, when they're doing something that they love, they want to do it greatly. They right. want to do it well. Yeah. I feel that's in them. And as parents, we know, and we know how to lead them into greatness. I remember Daniel. We should if, know how. It, well, we need, we need, we need to. And I feel like instinctually we kind of are given that yeah, gift Yeah, but there's some parents God. out there. I mean, there was a story. I remember watching the story. I think it was on 3030. If I'm, is that the ESPN show? I think what's called. Mm. And it was about this um, football player who played for USC, Todd uh, Moranovich or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he played for USC. And I remember his dad pushing him really hard since he was young, since okay. like three years old, like he couldn't eat nothing with sugar. No, I mean, we do a lot of that too, but we're not. <laughs> but it, they they made know. it sound so bad they in the show. Well, like, I think all parents come at us. What do you mean? You don't like I mean, them they had him doing pull ups and push ups. At, and, and, none of it, and at that level, it doesn't sound bad. It almost sounds like, you know, you have to step back and go, is that really bad? Or is he like trying to give him mm. the tools to win? But at some point, they had a fractured well, relationship. Well, if it's toxic, like if he's crying, I was. That's what I mean. Like, and I think it got up. to that point. And oh, by the no. time he was in high school, I mean, this guy was the best. He was uh -huh. the best because right. his dad had pushed him so hard and he went through the motions, but he was acting out in rebellion through other oh. things and getting into stuff and that he shouldn't have got into. how do you think that that is? Was it the influence that well, he kept around there him? There was, was so much people? promise. Oh, it was definitely all of that. Because that's another was, reason why parents though. of today are homeschooling because there's toxic, toxic influence out there that can just be, you know, change people's... I was, I was watching someone do an interview. I don't want to say their name, but they said, if I see someone that is bad hanging out with my kid and we're not at that stage. We haven't had that. But he said, I will do everything to bust up that relationship. And I'm like, maybe parents really do need to do that. Yeah, I'm going to take a remember, note. Remember that little kid on the, on the, playground that you used that to every swearing. time you would try to come up and play with daniel oh yes i would just kind of because he would swear and you're like it's time to these. go <laughs> we gotta go it's like dan dan <laughs> go yes yes you just i mean just do your kid's name? I, you it doesn't even matter out. it doesn't matter yeah. i don't know i don't know but it, he just i think that that was okay in his family and i just really didn't want them to even see i would just stand you, you in just front of them of just control. an older kid and out and of control. Yeah, so it's just like you see you see the tornado <laughs> coming. Like, it's time to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to go. It's time to go. Um, but I, I just think that that story about um, the football player, uh, Todd, he, I just, when I think about that, I think that there is probably some, there's some threshold there mm -hmm. where that when you get past or over that threshold and if you're, kid doesn't feel like it's in love that right. you're doing this in oh love gosh, yeah. and that you're not maybe explaining yourself. Cause I think we always, you know, I've come down hard on Daniel, but I, but I always start and I lead with Daniel, you're better than that. Mm -hmm. You can do better than that. Stop fooling around. You're supposed to be oh, practicing right that. now. And I maybe I'm a little hard. You've had to call me off yeah, on him a couple of times, it. but I hate but it. I can know I tell when you he why, can be though? better and I see it. Yeah. And, he, and especially when we're up against a little bit of a, you know, he was practicing for his one of his speeches, right? And I just had I, but I had to let him know that time right. was not on our side, right? But also, I mean, he's not in the type of sport where 
say he plays and he plays poorly, he's going to still get a victory prize or trophy or ring or whatever. He's not in any of those. But I feel like, what is it, darling? Oh, your heart. I know. Okay, can I give you a hug? Okay, you tell him that you love him and you want him to love you back. Oh, sweet baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. The now she, struggle she is real. <laughs> she loves her brother back. She, I was going to give her a hug, but she's running to go be with her brother. She's going to be okay. But what I was going to say was, yes, you can push. I don't, I don't really like it when you do that, but I do understand with the the thing that he's pursuing, the speaking, he wanted to be in a speaking contest. And we knew he couldn't win because you had to be 18. But they let him, um, and he's been in tons of and speaking contests. And he still made contests. it to the final round. Yeah, he still won. And and he did amazing. Like, yeah. people were cheering for him. Everybody on the on the, on the show was cheering I was, for him. I was worried that he might not. Like a, a part of my mama bear was like, what if they don't even let him go through or like, and then his heart's going to break. But then mm. at the same time I knew as the mama bear, I have to let his heart break because then he understands that either he has to do better or he will learn from this experience. But he actually <laughs> did surprisingly yeah, well he did and, and I, kicked I, butt I, I think he did the rounds. best of anybody I, I saw on there. Because there might have been better people, I feel but like I saw he did better. Anyway. When you get to I expose you your kids to things at a young age, they're fearless. Yeah. They're fearless. I mean, we have more fear about public speaking than than him. But I, but Don't when you think? think about these kids that are playing baseball or basketball or football or anything, mm -hmm. speaking mm -hmm. anything at the mm -hmm. highest level mm -hmm. and the, if you if you are not the best of the best, if you mm -hmm. are not pushing yourself in every aspect of your training, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that is, you're, you will not get there. That's right. And you're up that's against right. other greats. Well, and that's the way that we explain it. I believe that we don't just freak out. I feel whenever we're upset with our children, we really have a great way of communicating that and why they should put 100% into it because it's going to do this, that, and the other. Whereas maybe some people don't know how to communicate that and they get frustrated and yell, but they're not communicating why they need to put 100% in it. It's, this is a sport that you chose or this is a thing that you chose, so you need to do well. You've been listening to the Pretty and Punk podcast, and we've been speaking about pushing greatness. Are we helping or hurting our kids? We, it was such good content yes. that we needed to split it into two episodes. So we have another great episode, the other half of this episode dropping next week. Be sure to listen. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. God bless you. I hope this helped you. And if you know someone that needs this episode, please share it with them. And remember to review and be sure to listen rate. next week. Yes. See you next week. God bless. I hope this episode of the Pretty and Pop podcast inspired you today. If you want to see more, click the subscribe button and the thumbs up. God bless. Love you. You've been listening to Pretty and Pop. Pop. I hope you loved it. And I hope it changed your life. See you next week. God bless.